the old way. Which is against the word of God. Because the Bible said we should bring up our children in the way they ought. They ought. They ought to go. Not the way they want to go. In the way they ought. That means God expects you to know the way they ought. And you know. But you just don't care. You're afraid of the 999 God. Brothers and sisters, be there with the 999 God. That's right. Amen. The 999 God, whatever it is. It is time for us to return and bring our children up the way they ought to go, not the way they want to go. Because there is a way. See, it's right for men. But the end of earth is destruction, is death. So I want to continue my message from last week, the benefits of prayer. The benefits of prayer. And I have shown you last week, Jesus, before he made any decision, he prayed all night before he chose he has chosen his twelve disciples. The Bible said he prayed all night. Now, the question that he asked, you may ask yourself the question: Why should we pray every day? You may ask yourself that question: Why should we pray every day? But if you ask someone, a pastor, or a minister, that question, the first thing they will tell you: Why should we? Every day. Which is a normal answer, but that's not a reason why you should pray every day because you eat every day. So, why should we pray every day? Let me give you some answers of the Word of God. Why should we pray every day? Number one, because we were commanded to pray every day. If you are a child of God, you are commanded to pray every day. It's an order. It's not a request. Even all the religions that you know about are times of prayer. Especially the Muslim. I said especially the Muslim. Hello? And when the bell rings in those Muslim countries, every person needs to drop their tools, whatever they are doing, and pray. So you see those who are disciplined. I don't know much about the Hindus, but I heard a little bit. They, were, they have a time where they go with the flags, where the flags are, and they don't go and they are very serious in what they are doing the only people that are not serious when it comes to their God is the Christians but every other religion they are very committed very serious and they are proud to proclaim their God last night the other time I was watching this boxing and the, the, this guy won and the accent, do you think they did enough? He said, Allah Akbar. The first said, Allah Akbar. He said, Allah chose him to take to win. You see, he's proud. I said, he's proud to speak about his Allah. He's proud to speak about his Muhammad. He's proud to speak about his Muslim faith. But when it comes to us as Christians, we are ashamed. And the Bible said, we are ashamed of him. To be ashamed of you. So there was one we went some place we don't want anybody to call, call us brother and say, sir, we need go them the be here. That a young that a young boy used to be to a church together. I tell him saw him at the school. He said, Brother Bruce, he said, he called He was ashamed of our today, he's a drunkie. 
today he's a drunk. He should have accepted brother Bruce. And many of us, we don't want people to call us brother and sister on the road. We play on the road here. We deaf. But there are religions that are very serious. They are committed. We, 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 we hear enough to laugh at the, at the, at the, at the Jehovah Witness, but they are committed. They will stand up, box up the share tracks. They will come at your door, even though you, you tell the truth to tell them I'm not going to come back tomorrow. Because they believe in what they are doing. I said they believe in what they are doing. Can you imagine a man will take a bomb and tie it on his waist to go and kill other people in the name of Allah? Whatever they have taught, they have to believe what they have learned. And they are ready to make sacrifice even their life. Do 
Do you have any scar for, for Jesus? Do you have any scar for Jesus? What is the proof that you are a child of God? I'm trying to speak in tongues. The devil speak in tongues too.
Hebrews 11, 6 says, He that cometh to God must believe that he is God and he is a rewarder of those that earnestly, constantly, diligently seek him. So there's a reward in prayer. So it must not be about feelings. Uh, <laughs> I think they pray to me. Yeah, God. Why don't you go to yourself and ask me to pray to me? It must never be about feelings. So if you have been praying when you feel like, it's a proof to me that you're not going to be praying around the time. Because you, the devil always prevents you from having that feelings. But the next thing, why don't you, why don't you say, I don't feel, even though at times you don't feel to do certain things, it's an obligation, you have to do it. Okay. So, number one, feeling was never, prayer was never be a feeling. So, why should we pray every day? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. To tell. Proverbs chapter 3. So I told you, prayer is an obligation. If you are a Christian, as you say you are, and you don't pray, but then you are the most <laughs> weak one. You're weak. Now, this is this is Proverbs chapter 3. It says, this is David speaking to his son. And I'm speaking to you as my children. My son, do not forget. I'm not screen up to four because number five is the one I want to prove to you why you should pray every day. But I'm going to read this first. My son, do not forget my law. And let not your heart keep. And, but let your heart keep my commands. For a length of days, if you keep my commands, you have a length of days and live long life. And long life and peace they will have to you. What? What will have to you? If you keep what you're hearing today, if you keep the word that God is speaking to you today, you shall have a length of days and long life and peace will have to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bring them around your neck. These are the things you gotta put the train down and teach them these. Have you ever asked yourself why did Solomon, when God asked Solomon what you need, how could he say wisdom? Why did he say wisdom first? Because his father taught him that. His father, his father told him wisdom is the principal things. In order to get to get understanding, so God kept him. And then they would tell him, wisdom, if you get wisdom, is going to bring riches. It's going to bring this, it's going to bring that to that. So when God appears, he said, give me wisdom. God said, we're not going to give you wisdom, I'm giving riches too. Because wisdom brings riches. So he said, in verse 4, and verse 3, bind them around your neck, write them on the table of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God first, and men. Now look at verse 5. Why should we pray every day? Because we're supposed to trust in the Lord. Then you're going to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Listen to me. Why should we pray every day? We are proving that our trust is in the Lord. This day, I trust God with today.
Oh, thank you, Lord. Said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean on. I refuse to lean on my plans for the day. I refuse. Imagine tomorrow is not yet, and we already have plans for tomorrow. And God doesn't know about it. We haven't even presented to God. I'm going to get a scripture just up. So he said, Why should I pray every day? Because my trust is in Him. I trust Him with all my heart. I trust Him with today. I refuse to lean on my own understanding. So when we don't pray, we are leaning on our own understanding. Then he said in verse 6, In all the ways, acknowledge Him. And he shall direct your part. So this new month, the Lord, listen to me, is it pays to trust God. Amen. Can I repeat that? It pays to trust God. Amen. With all your heart. Amen. You will surprise to see some doors open up that you never even think about. For this one, there are doors. Imagine God leading some doors and I said, whoa. I never even think about it. I thought I had to go way places and, and to the find what I was looking for. But what I was looking for was right in front of me. But he directed my parts into the thing. I will tell you about this soon, don't worry. He said, all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your part. Stop listening to what people are saying. Some of you have to go to the perfect talk. Monday, but somebody went Friday and said, I'm going to go with you. God, don't, 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 don't go to the red woman in the car there. She, she, oh God. I know you are not going to go with the perfect woman. I mean, if that is the woman that I want to meet with. Exactly. Maybe your favorite right there. Right there. But you start to worry. You start to fight and feel warm. Oh, God. When people get cruel, no one has done me. I just try it. No, you're trying to change your point for, for Monday to I don't get to see. No. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. He is going to direct your part. Yeah. Are you hearing me? That's what we need to pray every morning and every day. You say to God, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust this day. Because you woke me up today and you woke me up with purpose. So I, I, I'm trusting you this day. I'm trusting you this day. Hallelujah. You will get all cooking with straight. The plans of the enemy will not prevail. Listen to me. That's the time when you wake up to be clear. No matter what the fall against me today, shall prosper. Every time that rises up against me, in judgment, it is come. Yeah. Don't just sit in your church. Sit where you are told when you wake up say, hey, This is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop sleeping on me. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Somebody shout Hallelujah. I will acknowledge him in all my ways. And he's going to direct my thoughts. That's the God we saw. Give me seven. Do not be wise in your own eyes. That's what happens when you don't pray in the morning. You get everything in the dark. I can take control. When Satan just slap you, no, you're going to go out and Oh, you're going to pray for me. You can avoid that if you have done it in the morning and commit your days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm story for us. Commit your ways to the Lord. Commit your days to the Lord. So he said, do not be wise in your own life. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be helped to your flesh and strength to your bones. Join the Lord with you with your possessions. Yes, yes, yes. And when the fruits or the first fruit of your increase, so your 
barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord! Trust in the Lord! Live from this day, from beginning from this day, as you wake up, commit the day to the Lord. And allow him to direct your thoughts. Commit your day to the Lord. Because he knows everything about that day. Things that you don't know about, he knows. Hallelujah. All the plans that every has set up. Even your friends have set up. When you see she's laying in the summer. Hey, God will bleed you up. You know, you want to go to play something and the whole system.
If you don't acknowledge God, He cannot direct your thoughts. Are you hearing me? Look at verse 3 here. Let's, let's look at verse 3. That verse 3 is powerful. Yes, try to get me the amplifier. That's what we try to do. Okay. Get me the amplifier. Why should we pray every day? Because we committed our works to the Lord. Look what it says. Verse 3. Things for him. 
This is my part of the lesson, but I just want you to understand. It. So if a man does not, this is why he came to do not understand it. If of course a man, a man, a man, you young by his name, you can't call me over here. And you are your friend. Parents, you want to pray? You want to pray for them. Commit them to the Lord. Commit our children to the Lord. Commit our children to the Lord. Father, in your hands, and Adam, Adam said, I'm going to give my son back to you. And she left Simon in the house of the Lord for him to learn. Simon had children after, but he learned how to take care. So we need to pray. Don't tell me you don't have anything to pray for. You have all those children to pray for. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. You are responsible for them. And if you truly love them, you want to pray because hell is real. Hell is real. I said hell is real. I said hell is real. Can I say it again? Hell is real. And if you know hell is real, you don't want to train them with it. And I'm telling you, if you don't teach them, if you don't pray for them, not only pray for them, but teach them, speak to them. They will go there. They will be, in fact, they will be way there if you will teach them right now. Hallelujah. So, we must commit our works. The church is a work, is our work also. We have so much to pray for them. We don't even start to pray as yet. So, why should we pray every day? Mark chapter 6, verse 41. Why should we pray every day? Matthew 26, verse 41, 41. Matthew 26, verse 41. This is the reason we should be praying every day also. Matthew chapter 26, 41. 4 and 1. Keep actively. Listen to this. Keep actively, keep actively watching and praying. Actively, every day, watch and pray. This is the word of Jesus. Keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. So when you don't pray every day, it's a possibility on in that day that you fall into temptation.
And then the spirit of God said, no, give it to the unknowns that you find a course. No. Let me get him with you. Is the Lord providing for your bills? Is the Lord just providing for you? Then let me come and say, oh, it was too wicked. That's what I'm taking the game to you. That's what I'm taking the game It's like people that get extra chains in the shop. The forces, we say, they try to be wicked. That's what they get. You see, they're not going to be close. No, 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 no. You're not the one to, to judge. Let God be the judge. Give it back. Can I get an amen? I said, give it back. I looked at Chinese many times I did that. I said, Chinese, I give you 10 euro, you give about 15 euro. It's okay. They don't ask questions, the thing was, I'm just going to give people. And we give up right away. No. Don't you ever think I wasn't tempted to take it? Of course I was tempted to take it. Because I said the same thing that you said. Chinese, the rap speech of people is preventing the every day. So if I can't get to that, it's God is watching. Tell you God is watching. So when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, you'll be, it will be very easy for you to overcome that temptation. When you don't pray, it is hard for you to overcome it. Because the enemy is there to push you to commit that sin. The enemy is there to push you to fall into temptation. But Jesus said, watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Yes, the spirit is strong, but the flesh is weak. So why should we pray every day? So we will avoid falling into temptation. If we don't pray, it will be easy for us to fall into temptation. Are you learning anything this morning? Is it truth? Examine yourself. Watch a time when you are so prayerful, you say less. Watch a time when you are prayerful, you say more. Easy. Easy to get vexed. Easy to fall into, into stuff. And the enemy knows. I said the enemy knows. Listen to me. There's three parts you can never fool. God, the devil, and yourself. You know. Even though some people are stacking in church, you know. Some people like to fool themselves to believe this. That's a, that's a dangerous person. A person who will lie and believe it. That's a promotion against of the devil. Have you ever seen people lie and believe it? Believe what for them is true. That's another level. But when you begin to watch and pray, you will be able to escape temptation. Now, the last chapter, Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. So we should pray. We should pray. Pastor, how long should I pray? Hmm. Pray till you feel the release. Of the Spirit of God. God release your time. You, you pray your heart out. So they can take be take our attention about. It doesn't matter what pray. Write down things you need to pray for. What did I say? Mark 13 what? I did not give you the, 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 the verse. Write things down to pray. Brother and sister, if you if you and I don't have a Transform life. It starts with prayer. Verse 23. It starts with prayer. If revival is going to come to our hearts, to our homes, to our lives, it starts with prayer. Family prayer. I want to suggest to you start back your family prayer. I didn't say to do every year as yet. Don't start big, start small and grow. Make sure at least a day in the week you gather your children, drag your husband, put him out the bed if he's coming, or pour water out of the bed. I tell all the way to ask me a few husbands in this house. Husband, you are res- if you are a husband, you are responsible in leading your family in the prayer. That's your responsibility. 
Because before you had a wife, you're supposed to have a relationship with God. Now if you have a wife, you're supposed to bring her into that relationship with God. Say amen. 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 You say the mothers have a lot of work. Bring on the church. Put them to sit up. Pray. I didn't grow with a father. I make more than me. Tea every morning. Prayer. And we had we had a verse we had to say. We had a verse in the morning to take us through the day. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about my grandma, I'm not talking about my mother. She'll wake me up, wake us up to pray. Not for us to pray by ourselves. She pray with us. Hallelujah. Till one minute, uh, some, 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 something, I think. It was a steel band. I had a steel band in Kayana. I wanted, I, I was playing in steel. Said, no, no, no steel band for you. There's a Christian. Come on, be not a Christian. <laughs> I'm not a Christian. He <laughs> said, yes, it's a church. But you know why you're doing it. <laughs> so I'm not a Christian. No. Oh, be on your guard. And safe. And safe.
You see? Maybe some of you will chop up with your own way. Chop up and chop up is bigger. It's better. I train myself like that. And I challenge you to train, train your children like that. I always aim for the top. I was working on the seat. I started back there. I said, ah, I'm going to be kept. I must be called captain. I push myself. I, I can't be called captain. I can't be called captain. Push yourself. If you're working, if you're working at McDonald's, you must be called the manager of McDonald's. Then you must be the same man that will be one McDonald's. Okay? Down on Mac. Yes. 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 You can't be worried about all this in life. It's your mentality. It's the way a man, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's the way you think. Teach your children to think like that. If you were to be in the army, go to the army, you must aim for general. I was going to be general. Look at this. 
verse 5. He, con he continued to seek God. You see that? He continued. It's people a king, a king, a king. He continued. He continued. Please look what you're doing here, please. Verse 5. He continued to seek God. In the days of Zachariah, in the days, today you hear what Pastor Richard is saying, as you continue to seek God, in the days of Zachariah, who understanding through the visions of the vision of God, as long as he sought God, inquire of, longing for, see it, as long as he sought, inquire of, Longing for the Lord, God calls him to to Uzziah the king succeed in war. As long as he continue seeking, inquiring, longing for the Lord, God calls him to prosper. God calls him to succeed. As long as you continue, as long as God's army continue, as long as you, you and your family continue, we gotta be born like Joshua and say, You choose who you want to choose, but for me and my house, we will pray, we will serve God, we will trust God, we will worship God. Did you hear me? It's your choice. It's your choice. Are you going to continue? I say this and I said it before I said it again. It's better to try, to, to, to start, to over start, to over start, than to stop and go do anything. If you start today and it goes for a week, go for some month, and then you begin to slap, start over. Don't just stay doing nothing. I challenge you today, my brothers and my sisters, that you and I begin to bring our families back together. And we know what the people say, right? A family pray together. So why family are not staying together? Because they're not praying together. Let's begin to exercise that. Let's begin to put it in practice. But Pastor, I'm carrying big, as long as live by you, they live. Hello, as long as I live by you, you won't be me. I was living by my mother, 19 years old, working. My mother said, we part I don't meet you, stay for me. We never tell, I don't meet you. The thing is stupid. If you meet you in the house, you stay in the house. If you meet you by the shop, you stay by the shop. But this house I lose. <laughs> Whenever they drop me to sleep. I said, this woman will get down. Can not that come? Door closed. I sleep in the back. But she was teaching me principles. You see, you're young, you know, everybody else wants to let them go and do the want. And you say, Mother, she loves you. When I, I, I got the house and I was living in there, and one morning my clothes pop up. I said, son, go and live by your parents. Go and live with your parents. You can't walk to your parents there and you can be. And sleep in here, go. Then she commanded my auntie not to give me that a drop of food when they come. I said, so I'm going to buy. No, but she was teaching me. If she continue, ever continue eating, I want to buy a stove, I want to buy a spoon, I want to buy a cup, I want to look over a table, I don't want to look over a bed. <laughs> when I get to be a school, this one was teaching me something. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they help somebody, it's not to help them. Don't tell me, it's my child. You need a child. 
and you will never become a man. They will never become a man. Guys, you tell you, teach them to be men. Responsible. Say that. is an opportunity God has given, has given to us. That we can restore everything that was stolen from us. From us. As we put this week, this particular week, listen to me. I thought it was for me alone when the Lord spoke to me. 
last day as a close in the Lord. Bring it back to your memories and tell them. That's what we told them. Say, this is your week, Richie. You can restore everything the enemy has stolen from me. Everything. If you put my word to work, spend quality time with me. You see, for me, right? When the Lord called me, I heard nobody called, nobody put me to the pastor. No, 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 no. No. I heard the voice of God just like we hear, but I heard it. I was working on a seat with, a, with one of my friends that called Marco. Not Marco, not back there. We were just finished conversating and we went to bed. You know, and see these five person words work on the boat. The captain had his own room and the crew member had a room to have one bed. And I was sleeping in the truck, he was sleeping in the truck. We just finished conversating. And I put my head down and I heard Richard. I said, Mark, how many have me for? He said, No, I'm calling you. And I put my head down back again and I have a rich one again for the second time. I said, Mark, how many have you called me for? He said, I didn't call you. <laughs> and the third time I heard, Richard, spend time with me. And I will show you what I'll do with your life. I've never been to Bible school. I've never preached before. Yes, the preacher was small, it was a preaching. Everything I heard the pastor said I would be doing. It's repeated. Make my own mind say, Father, well, I want to be a thief, I want to be this, I want to be that. But I've never preached since I was I know myself. He said, spend time with me. And I will show you what I do with your life. Why am I saying this? I tell you that this ministry, from the, the foundation of this ministry, is spending time with God. And He will show us if you are part of this ministry, it's the same word for you. Spend time with God. And He will show you what He will do. Listen, in your life, for your life, with your life, and through your life. So this week, I want to challenge you. Give God this week. In what? In prayer. In studying the word. Take quality time this week. I'm not talking about five minutes, ten minutes, one minute. I'm talking about if you are quality time is 10 minutes, so let it be. What did I say? This week, take quality time. Spend in prayer, communion, relationship, fellowship, conversating with your father. This week, I can promise you as God delivered. If you do that and there's no change, but then I have lied. And God has spoken to me, cannot lie. This week, give this week to the Lord. This week. Whatever you say, if you go fast, say, no, no, whatever. But make sure you spend time. Time that you have never spent before. Time that you have never Spend this week, every day, beginning from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, today, and see, see for your own self. That's what he told me last night. I said, Yes, it's for me. But I'll start here and say, no, It's for you too. Take you of yourself and the flock. So what he gives me is for you. I challenge you. Put aside all your business that hasn't taken you anywhere. And let's spend time this week. Now, the church door will be open. You can come in. You want a place of quietness? Come. Come. Take your car. Just spend time. Come with your Bible with a book. 
in shaping you also as you spend time at home, go with that book because he will speak. You see, when you go with a book, you expect him to say something. So you write it down. Or you, you, you take your phone, whatever he says, you say it to remember it. Put it on, put it on play moves, so nobody can disturb you. Record. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. My eyes is closed, so maybe a lot of people left already, I don't know. But if you're here in the building, are you with me? Yeah. So, see, put this to work and see. Okay, yes, both of you. Both, both of them can see. Put this to work and see. We are all of you in this house. And the sound of my voice, I can guarantee you. Did you just read it? As long as you sought the Lord, inquire of the Lord, have the longing for the Lord. God made him to prosper. God made him to prosper. Thank you. 
what we have heard this morning. Bring your children next to you. Bring your children next to you. You know, take two minutes of prayer. Bring your children next to you. All your relatives. To be a cousin, to be a niece, grands, whatever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We love you. Oh, Ramah, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, who could do it? In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you. Now, you begin to pray for your children. You begin to pray for your children. You love them, don't you? You love them. Pray for them. Pray for them. It could be the breaking of something right now. It could be the breaking of something. Right now. Take this word very serious. Take this word very serious. It's the breaking of something. Something is breaking. But you need to pray from your heart. You need to pray. Sincerity of your heart. And you need to open your mouth. Whatever or what direction you see the child is going that is not a part of God, I said reverse it now. I said reverse it now. I said reverse that direction now. They will not take that direction. You cannot see things as a God as a He's the only who when you speak it. You, in, you invite them into the situation. That they are that road, they are that is not the narrow road. I decree and declare they're coming off of that road now. I bring them off of that road in the name of Jesus. Come off of that road. Come off of that road in the name of Jesus. The Bible says we must snatch some people, snatch them. Before the car hit it, snatch them off of that road before they get hit. If you see, if you see, and I know you see, don't laugh, don't take it for granted. Pull them off. The Bible snatch some of them out of the fire. Snatch. I snatch you in the name of Jesus. Road, my son, come out of that road, my daughter. As long as they are your children on your roof, it's your responsibility. If they're not on your roof, all you can do is believe God can bring them out. Why don't you open your mouth, get vexed because of the love that you have for them? If you don't cry for them now and cry to God and bring them out, you will cry after them and it's too late. Father, in the name of Jesus. See, Kapura Baba Shaka Kapura. They're coming off of that room. My sons and daughters will serve you. They will serve you. They will serve you true and only. God. They will serve you with all their hearts, all their soul, all their mind. 
in the name of Jesus. My children in this house, all of you, you are for signs and wonders. Satan, let it go. Listen, let it go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every family in this house. We be a prayerful family. We be a prayerful family. My sons and my daughters in Christ Jesus. We are not a prayerful family. We will pray together. Father, thank you for a fresh heart in my head. Lord, as I lay hands on them, they will receive what you will depart with me. Lord, I change the direction of life. If that direction is evil, I change it. I change the direction. Not good. And Lord, they are coming on that road, that narrow road, that narrow road, that narrow road, that narrow road. I take them on that narrow road in the name of Jesus. I destroy the plans and the works of the enemy over their life. I take authority over the power of the enemy. Lord, in Jesus' name, in your word and pack them in desire for what is right and let the lose the desire for what is wrong. Begin by destroying every evil friendship, every evil company, every bad company. Let the company begin to change from today. Let the company begin to change from today. In the name of Jesus, let I bless them with 
wisdom, knowledge, understanding. They are blessed. They learn how to hear evil and love what is good. I bless them going out. I bless them coming in. I scatter the works of the enemy over their lives. And your will will be done. Only your will will be done. Only your will be done in and through their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Let the work of the enemy scatter right now. Scatter right now from their lives. Remove from their lives their thoughts. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We bless the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. It is done. 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 You're blessed. Touch them. Touch them. Say you're blessed. I bless you. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed, my child. You're blessed. You're blessed, my son. You're blessed, my daughter. You're blessed. You're blessed. You are blessed. You will make me proud. You will do great things. You will do great things. You will do great things. Yes, speak words of life into them. You will do great things to the Lord. You will make me proud as your father, as your mother. Oh, you will make me proud. You will make me proud. I want the big ones, the big sisters, the big brothers to come to small ones. And you will make your big brother proud. You will make him big sleep. You are blessed. Come on, brothers, bless you, little brothers, bless you, little sister. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Teach them to love each other, to speak words of life over each other. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Clap your hands in God's praise.